A narrow strip along the west coast of southern Africa is the home of the oldest desert in the world, the Namib. We know the Namib for the many ships and their unfortunate occupants who came to an untimely end here, and of course the many seal colonies along the coastline. In recent years it has become popular with 4x4 enthusiasts who come from far to explore this fascinating landscape and to test their driving skills on some of the highest sand dunes in the world. Fly-in safaris carry visitors to remote campsites with beautiful surroundings. We know the Namib as a dry and hostile environment where it is hard to believe that any plant or animal can survive. Yet there are creatures that in spite of the scorching sun, the lack of water and the vicious biting sandstorms thrive here. As a matter of fact, the Namib has more plant and animal life than any other desert in the world. Even elephants have found a way to survive. Specially adapted to desert conditions, they often travel long distances between food sources and water holes. The Gemsbok is very much at home in this environment. It lives on vegetable matter and can go without water for long periods at a time. Of course, jackals often turn up in the most unexpected places. Life in this desert depends entirely on the presence of two prevailing winds that blow throughout the year. The first is the Berg wind, also known as the Ost wind, which starts in the eastern side of South Africa and eventually sweeps across the Namib. It brings with it large quantities of organic matter as well as various insects. Many creatures of the desert are totally dependent on this food provided by the bergwind. The tenebrioid beetle survives on this organic matter. Its white back also reflects the heat and reduces its body temperature. Beetles in turn are preyed upon by the desert chameleon and the slip-faced lizard. The dune-plated lizard, on the other hand, is a vegetarian. Lizards are, of course, a favorite food of the sidewinding snakes. At some places in the Namib, we find stretches of red sand. When looked at through a strong magnifying glass, we see that it is made up of millions of tiny garnets, a well-known semi-precious stone. Some of the dunes are known as roaring sand dunes. When the sand starts rolling down the slope, the friction causes a strange deep roar that somehow seems to come from the sky and sounds like an aeroplane passing overhead. Visitors love to create this effect. Towards the east of the Namib, the sand dunes make way for a more mountainous terrain. Evidence of volcanic activity, the folding of different layers of rock under enormous horizontal pressure, 
as continents collided millions of years ago, can be clearly seen here. Bushmen were among the first human beings that lived in the Namib Desert. Today, the Himbas are the only indigenous people that have survived here. They live mainly on goat milk and meat, and sell ornaments and souvenirs to tourists. These Himbas are descendants from a group of Hereros who came from Angola many years ago. In years of exceptionally high rainfall, springbuck and other animals move into the desert areas from the interior. At times like this, small lakes are often formed among the dunes. The lack of food has caused various birds and animals to become extremely tame at some of the campsites. Here, a bookmakiri takes food from our hand. A dusty rat is a regular visitor. Even the dune-plated lizard has developed a taste for cheddar cheese. The other wind that sustains life in the desert is the one that blows in from the coast. It blows the fog that is formed on the cold Benguela current inland and provides just enough moisture to sustain the specially adapted plant life. This little plant is known as the grape bunch, Feigi, because its leaves look like grapes. It only occurs in the Namib and only in an area of about three square kilometers. The dollar bush gets its name from the shape of its leaves, which look like coins. The elephant's foot is one of the Gemsbok's favorite foods. Only those specimens that grow in places that are difficult to get to manage to survive. The Walwitschia is also dependent on the moisture brought in by the fog. It has been called a weird botanical wonder. Some of these plants are said to be 2,000 years old. It only has two leaves that grow quite long and become shredded after many years of thrashing in the desert wind. Their leaves collect moisture from the fog that is eventually absorbed by the plant. Various species of lichen thrive on the tiny bit of moisture brought in by the morning fog. Lichen is not really a plant, but a combination of algae and a fungus. The algae provides food through photosynthesis and the fungus supplies water and shelter. Through this relationship they can survive in places where no plant can. But perhaps the most interesting example of adaptation belongs to a type of grass known as Bushman grass. This rough drawing illustrates the way it is propagated. The seed is attached to the stem and blown in by the berg wind. Two or three feathery attachments help it float through the air. The lower part of the stem has a peculiar spiral shape, almost like a drill bit. When the stem falls to the ground, the feathery attachments ensure that the seed is in direct contact with the ground. When a morning mist blows in, a strange thing happens. As the moisture reaches the spiral part of the stem, it starts to turn and practically drills the seed into the ground. Even when we hold the stem between slightly moistened fingers, it will turn. When the seed has been drilled in deep enough, the stem will eventually break, leaving the seed to germinate.
The Namib Desert is one of the world's last wilderness areas. The ever-changing dune landscape, the mysterious rock formations, its majestic solitude, but most of all its biological diversity with animals and plants adapted to the utmost limits in order to survive. All these factors add up to make this place of fragile beauty one of the most unusual desert environments in the world.